Today's discussion will be presented in three sections since we are recording it for broadcast on Federal News Radio 1500 AM. You're welcome to post questions and comments during the session and we'll try to answer them online. I'd like to introduce our moderator, Jason Miller, executive editor at Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. Welcome to the discussion. My guests today are Susie Adams, the Chief Technology Officer at Microsoft Federal, Marlon Andrews, the Deputy Chief Information Officer at the National Archives and Records Administration, Guy Cavallo, the Deputy CIO for the Small Business Administration, Jay Huey, the Director of the Secure Cloud Portfolio at the Technology Transformation Service in the General Services Administration, and Dr. Matthew McFadden, the Cybersecurity Director for CSRA. Welcome to the program today. Thank you. Thank you. Before we get started, let me set some context for our discussion. Cloud computing, mobile devices, the Internet of Things, the increasing digitization of information and processes are pushing agencies toward a hybrid computing environment. Now this is when agencies have a mix of on-premise and commercial cloud infrastructures. Among the challenges these hybrid environments present are around securing your data. On one hand, experts say moving non-mission critical systems and data to the public cloud offers flexibility and agility with little worry. On the other hand, experts also say Keeping mission critical systems on premise or in a, in a government only commercial cloud helps with peace of mind and confidence that your systems are secure. Now at the same time, running a, a hybrid IT environment could create a line of sight problems between those two environments, on premise and cloud systems. Cyber professionals can see what's happening on internal systems or they can see what's happening on external systems, but not necessarily on both at the same time, especially when data is being shared among the two environments. The dual environments also create cyber challenges for securing mobile devices. And this is why emerging approaches to cybersecurity, such as automation, machine learning, can give agencies the eyes and the ears that they otherwise wouldn't have in trying to secure these dual environments, especially with the ever-increasing number of endpoints and ever-increasing number of threats. To move to and secure this hybrid environment, agencies have a lot to consider, including workforce training and how best to use data analytics. And this is where our panelists will come in today to help answer those questions. So once again, my guests are Susie Adams, the Chief Technology Officer for Microsoft Federal, Marlon Andrews, the Deputy Chief Information Officer for the National Archives and Records Administration, Guy Cavallo, the Deputy Chief Information Officer for the Small Business Administration, Jay Huey, the Director of the Secure Cloud Portfolio at the Technology Transformation Service in the General Services Administration, and Dr. Matthew McFadden, the Cybersecurity Director for CSRA. So let me turn to uh, Guy to start the, the conversation today. You guys have been doing a ton to move to the cloud. It's, it's uh, probably one of the big success stories we've seen over the last 18 months or so. Uh, talk a little bit about the, the, how you guys are really looking at security, cloud. G give me the overview. Well, sure. Um, one thing that SBA is doing right now is due to the disasters that we're responding to, we're going to double the agency size in about six weeks. So cybersecurity is something that we can't put on the sideline as we uh, greatly expand our, our, our uh, infrastructure and endpoints. So what we've done, uh, the efforts that we've done so far this year to move to the cloud are actually playing right into this. Instead of buying thousands of more laptops for these spun up employees, we're looking at using virtual desktops in the cloud, which if we hadn't gotten to the point where we are, would not have been an option. Uh, a cost difference of, let's say, $2,000 to about $40 per device. Uh, but with that, the cybersecurity implementation that we've put in place has been a big help. Something that we're doing a little bit different than I've seen other agencies do is as you're in that hybrid model, I see a lot of people spending time and effort trying to make their on-premise tools measure and monitor the cloud. We flip that. We're using the cloud tools and we're using them to, to measure and monitor our on-premise environment. Uh, it's led to some interesting findings within uh, five minutes of when we pointed the cloud security tools at our infrastructure and I had the dashboard on my computer. I saw a lot of red lights going off, <laughs> so I clicked on them. And Wait, are you uh, supposed to click on red lights? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, links, that's lights, a, yeah whatever. <laughs> and um, it pointed out some things that I then called my security operations center and said, are you guys looking at this? And they said, looking at what? Um, and so the on-premise tools weren't catching the same thing. So we're very committed to using the cloud tools to help us implement cybersecurity instead of trying to replicate everything on premise into the cloud. So I think the, the cloud cyber you're talking about in some cases is CDM, continuous yeah. diagnostics and mitigation. I think SBA was the first agency to do CDM in the cloud, yes. but I imagine there's other tools as well that you're looking at. Uh, is this both securing your on premise and securing your cloud substantiations? 
Yes, and uh, some of our team wanted to do, we'll treat on-premise security one way and we'll split the hybrid into two camps and we'll use the cloud security tools to just measure what's in the cloud. Uh, even though we put CDM in the cloud, I'm talking about specifically the cloud security tools that are built in to the major providers and just using them to uh, analyze our on-premise equipment. So mm -hmm. we do have CDM in the cloud and we're using that, but it's the traditional on-premise version just implemented an infrastructure as a service in the cloud. Right, fascinating. Uh, let's move over to Jay. Jay, you don't necessarily get to implement <laughs> cloud security. Right. You just help other agencies do it. Talk a little bit about what you're seeing within the uh, federal environment. Yeah, I have a great job. Thanks, Jason. I mean, I, I see us as in GSA as serving as kind of a center of excellence, you know, best of uh, re real estate, best of acquisition, and best of technology, if you will. And what I've seen is the hybrid cloud you mentioned, I consider it horizontally, like when you're connecting on-prem and in the cloud, but there's also kind of a, a vertical scale that we see around hybrid, which is the integration of applications or multiple cloud services, right? You might have infrastructure running an infrastructure as a service environment, but your ticketing system for help desk is another cloud provider. And to see that connection in that vertical scale where you know, information is shared and the, the change we've seen, I think, over the few years from vendors around software as a service applications, really connecting, exporting, importing data, that's been a big shift around agencies' cloud migration activities. So it's interesting you talk about the vertical scale, right? If you have multiple cloud providers and each has a security piece, uh, uh, like Guy did, how do you have that dashboard? Mm -hmm. Is that, is, I know, we, again, we can talk CDM all day, but is that the dashboard, is that, is that where that's end, that data is ending up a lot of times? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, the traditional model is I've got a bunch of stuff on-prem and I'm going to lift it off-prem. And, you know, we're used to kind of large-scale acquisitions that CIO shops do to do that. I think the model is really shifting around applications. And the dashboard is really maybe per application because what seems you know fine for one application might not be for another one from that dashboard perspective. And I think we've started to see from the agile DevOps perspective just the, the value of decentralizing those metrics to the degree possible with the team, still surfacing the red lights, the blinky indicators, right? But making that very specific to the application workload so that the insights can be there and you're not kind of standardizing on the least common denominator, right? Interesting. Uh, Susie Adams from Microsoft, talk a little bit about what you're seeing for with clients that you guys work with. Um, sure. So, I, you know, I think what's, uh, in listening to uh, uh, everybody talk here, just this, just in the short time we've had, the biggest challenge, I think, for agencies is that as they move to the cloud, uh, the dynamics of what they're managing changes. And if you look at this uh, from a variety of different perspectives, what we're really seeing is the perimeters extending beyond the traditional guards and gates and guns and firewalls that we're used to. You know, an old way to react to a security breach was to basically just di disconnect from the network, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to disconnect from the internet and I'm going to be safe and everything's going to be on-prem, right? What's really happened now is we're really moving to uh, a world where it's really perim perimeterless, where identity really needs to become the new firewall and the, the devices where the data lives is the new perimeter. Right? And if we start to extend that to this hybrid world where workloads are living on premise and in the cloud, right, it's a very different challenge than what agencies in, in uh, commercial industry is used to protecting. Right? No longer can you just look at NetFlow data, you really need to be able to look at signal that's coming from applications. And when we start to look at signal, for example, can you determine if somebody has logged on with valid credentials from two different locations um, in two different parts of the world within 30 minutes of each other. Now that could be physically impossible. And the old school way of looking at things, you would have never caught that anomaly. Right? So really what we're seeing and what we're trying to do uh, as a company is to invest in technology that helps you look at all that signal right, as a big data analytics problem. Mm -hmm. right? So we have something called the intelligent security graph that we now extend that signal to our cloud-based tools to help you monitor both on-premise and in the cloud and see those anomalies that you could never see as a human just simply running a report. And so I think you know, it's really a mind shift. Right? People have to think about this differently. They have to assume breach, for example. Mm -hmm. right? And as long as you can start to wrap your head around, hey, my perimeter is no longer just at my network boundary or at the walls of my data center, and that is going to be the norm moving forward, then you'll start to be able to take advantage of some of the newer technology that's out there to help you manage and see those, those uh, anomalies. Jay, I, jump in real quick. I'd just like to build on that because I think Susie's point around identity is key. Um, we looked at the cloud service providers that are in the federal portfolio, which I'm responsible for, and everyone likes to sort of talk about the, you know, the 
allocation of controls. Oh, you got to do a lot for infrastructure as a service and a lot less for software. But when we looked at all the data, it's really basically 20%. You have to, as an agency, understand who your users are and what permissions they should have, right? Identity, credential, and access management. So back to Susie's point, right? The old model would be, I'm going to take this off the network. The new model is, I'm only going to give the trusted administrator a chance to log in to sort of fix or, or de you know, f solve the breach, right? To figure out if we even had something. And th that's the shift. And I think that you know, the, when we think about managing data on devices, we still think about it in terms of traditional device management software, right? If there's if somebody loses their cell phone, I want to be able to wipe the device. We actually need to take that, right, uh, uh, and and add a bunch more capabilities to the products or to the services that are actually managing your devices, so that if you can lock down data on a device by an identity. Mm -hmm. Right, and consider that you know if they have a valid identity, then they get to access this data, and if they don't, record that and actually have a record of that, as opposed to just wiping the device. Right, then you can have control over where your data lives. Right, so it's a much more granular approach to protecting probably the most valuable asset we have, which is the data. Let me uh, turn to Marlon from. Uh Nara, talk a little bit about Nara's look uh, in terms of the hybrid environment and security and how those two are coming together. So I think the one thing that you'll see is that nobody has a singular correct approach. Everybody has to do what's best for themselves. And Nara is in a unique position, whereas we're not trying to so much protect as in make a, our data available. So we're using the cloud to expand our offerings and make access happens, which is one of our core goals. So in our security blanket is like, how do you maintain availability and integrity more so than the confidentiality part of the security triad? So we have unique challenges in that we have to make things available, we have to make them easily available so that we can make them available to the public because that's our role. And, and I think that's a great point because one of the things that we get focused on security so much of how do you how do you hold on to your data, right, or protect it, or make sure that the only right people have it. But for Nero, you want everyone to see it, but you want that data to stay this, to, to be the same. You don't want someone to come in and change the data. And even if it's something as silly as they'll change the Declaration of Independence, you know, something like that could could be not necessarily harmful, but could look bad. Uh, and that's absolutely correct. And but we do also have the other part with the military records where we have to keep that secret. So we have to be very agile in how we distribute cloud and our security because we have different models for depending on what type of data we're talking about and what are our holdings. And you guys are you guys in that hybrid environment yet, or are you still leaning yes, towards the on-prem cloud or the? No, no, no. We're, we're in the hybrid environment, and we're bringing on and looking at more cloud providers to make sure we stay heterogeneous and we're not relying too much on one technology. So. So it's all about that balancing act. All right. So uh, uh, Matthew from CSRA, you are our cyber expert, so to speak. You've been nodding your head as you heard everyone talk. Give me some reaction to what you're hearing to the yeah, panel. I, I agree with everyone across the board. Um, Yay! You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know a, as a, you know, we move into the cloud, the the threat landscape completely changes. So the you know as you know Guy mentioned, the the on-premise environment and the tools and processes that you're using, you know, may not totally translate you know into the cloud. And uh, remember, you know, whether you're doing infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, uh, each application and environment is different. Along with, you know, each of the ways that the different cloud providers, uh, you know, implement their technologies. So, you know, as that threat landscape changes, we, we have to really define our tools, our processes, um, and kind of rethink the way that, you know, we, we usually have, have done business. So, you know, from CSRA's perspective, you know, we spend a lot of time, you know, kind of educating our customers on, hey, this is what FedRAMP is. Uh, this is how you get an ATO. Uh, these are some of the you know security controls that you need to you know change to kind of meet you know the criteria uh, to you know move you into a more secure environment. Uh, so yeah, and a lot you know echoing kind of Susie, you know a lot of the the tools change. You know you, we see a lot more emphasis on uh, data loss prevention, uh, insider threat. Uh, identity is huge. Uh, identity not only within the infrastructure, but how do you access the cloud environments? So how do, you know how do I set up a PIV card or a CAC card to access the environment? Um, a lot of things to, to consider, and I, I would say it's it's not always a lift and shift. You know, we y you definitely need to take the time to begin to understand. You know, what is the environment? What is the data that you're trying to protect, and how can you securely uh, migrate that into the new environment? 
Uh, let me play off something that Marlon said too, uh, uh, Matthew, because one of the things is you have, multi you have this, we're talking about this hybrid environment. So in some environments, the, the PIV or the CAC works easy. If you have an on-premise, if, if Guy has an on-premise solution, but if Guy puts a solution in the cloud, that use of PIV or CAC may not be as easy, or, or maybe I'm wrong, maybe it is just easy or easier. Oh yes, it, it's it's more difficult because you know you don't have the the same connections you know as you did on the on-premise environment. Uh, so you know as uh, a lot of the you know the the different technologies out there, I mean, are are completely different than the cloud. And a lot of the cloud providers actually provide you know easy ways to actually implement that, which may be different than what you're currently using in your your agency or environment. So guys, since I picked on you with the, with, the, uh, with my example to Matthew, are you guys, how are you guys dealing with that doubling of the workforce and ensuring that the identities match, right? Because you're going to have some temporary workers or some, some people on detail or, or, or surge to help with uh, the rebuilding in, in Texas and in Florida. How do you deal with that identity piece? Uh, that, that's been an interesting discussion at our senior leadership level, um, knowing there's a certain number of applications that can be processed by a person a day. They have all the data from Katrina where we found fell months behind on being able to help uh, respond. So they take those formulas and see that, okay, we need, uh, SBA has 2,000 employees, we need 6,000 to do this, and we need them within a month. Um, and the, the question came up with, uh, for us is, okay, how do we do that securely? Do we only use government furnished equipment? Do we bring people on as government employees and give them PIV cards? Do we let remote users perhaps not use a PIV card but do other type of identity? Uh, we're working through that process now, and, and uh, what I like what our senior leadership did is that they listen to us lay out the security risks of each level. That uh, the easiest one for us to do was government furnished equipment with a government PIV card for a government cleared employee. Uh, then the next level we start working it back to government equipment with a PIV card but maybe not a full clearance all the way back to it's a volunteer from a law firm who wants to work for a day for us who wants to use their own equipment in their own law office and connect to us. Um, we walk through the easy part <laughs> to the very hard part, uh, and what we're doing as an organization is we're taking that in stages, and as the uh, applications come in from Harvey and Irma and, and Maria, um, we're still at the level where it's going to be government only, but so we haven't made that executive decision of are we going to let a non-government employee on their own equipment come in and access our systems that disperse hundreds of millions of dollars of grants. Uh, yeah. But let's say that uh, right now we just converted our large conference center to a 140 user uh, uh, work area so that we could bring people in with our own government equipment and, and PIV cards. So we're ramping up different ways like that. But uh, you'll have to check with me later to see, if, to to see how far down the list we go. All right. Well, let's take a quick break and we can come back and, and, and talk more about the challenges of the hybrid environment. You're listening to the discussion, Cybersecurity, Protect, Detect, and Respond, sponsored by Microsoft and CSRA on federalnewsradio.com and 1500 AM.